Hello and welcome to Zeged in Hungary and the final day of the Canoe Sprint World Championships 2019. And what a show it has been so far. We have had it all. We've had some surprise results, some absolutely dominating performances, world title winning comebacks and super fast times as well. And we're about to see it all over again today with more medals, more world titles and more qualification places for the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games up for grabs. Well, kicking things off this afternoon, we have the final of the women's C2 and K1 500 metres. That'll be followed by the men's K2 and C1 1000 before we switch our focus to the 200 metre events with the finals of the women's C2, men's C1 and men's K2 200 metres. And then we'll round things off with the final of the men's C4 500 and two of the most thrilling spectator events on the programme, the men's and women's K4 500 metres. But first up, we have the final of the women's C2 500 metres. In lane one, representing Japan, Kiriaki Taruko and Kubota Manaka. In lane two, representing Ukraine, Ludmila Luzan and Anastasia Chet-Verikova, the reigning under-23 European champions. In lane three, from Uzbekistan, the reigning under-23 world champions in the C2 200, that's Denotha Rachmatova and Nulufar Zokirova, Cuba, lining up in lane four, Borja Samon and Nueva Segura. Representing China in lane five, Sun Meng Ya and Xu Shi Xiao. Alongside them in lane five, the reigning European champions, Kinchu Takach and Virag Bala. Hear that noise from the home crowd getting behind the Hungarians. In lane seven, representing Belarus, last year's European silver medalists, Olga Klimova and Nazea. Makachanka of Belarus in lane eight. From Chile, Maria Mayar and Karen Rocco. And finally, lane nine, Lisa Yarn and Ophelia Prella. Pleased to say, alongside me, I have the uh, Paralympic gold medalist and 10-time world champion Curtis McGrath from Australia. Fresh from adding another two world championship gold medals to his collection in the KL2 and VL3 200 metres. And Curtis, you've, you've done it already. You've got your medals. You've got your Paralympic qualification in the bag. How are these athletes feeling sitting on that start line with so much, uh, so much at stake? Yeah, there will be a little bit of pressure on them at the moment. You know, really going for that uh, Olympic qualifying quota spots for their nation and also, you know, world championship medal as well, which is on the table. And a really, really exciting time for women's canoe boat racing. It will make its Olympic debut in Tokyo. And the top eight boats in this event will qualify, so not just about the medals. is underway on this final day of the 2019 Canoe Sprint World Championships. The women's C2 500 metres are out of the blocks. And it's a big start from China out there in lane five. Remember, we're missing the Canadian crew due to Lawrence Vincent Lapointe's suspension there with the reigning world champions. So this is wide open. China in the lead at the moment, ahead of Hungary. And Ukraine just in that bronze medal position at the moment, but still plenty of racing to go in this one. They're really getting into the rhythm now, sort of feeling out the competition, seeing who's around them, and looking forward to processing their race plan according to what they've been training for. We'll come through the 250 metre mark. We are halfway in this women's C2 500 metre final. We're looking at the Chinese pair at the moment, Sun Mengya and Xu Shershao. They have the lead to go into the last half of the race. They're followed closely by the home team. You can hear that crowd really pushing them on. The Hungarians now really starting to push through. Can they close that gap on China to take world championship gold? They're just over half a boat length behind now. 
That's Katakac and Bala of Hungary, the reigning European champions in the C2500 and C2200. They won gold at the European Games, currently in silver medal position. Huge battle on for bronze medal position as well. Germany in lane nine. Can't see them on the screen at the moment, but they are really, really pushing themselves into the medals. Still China, though, in the lead. They've got just over 50 metres to go. China look extremely relaxed considering this stage of the race. Hungary not making any ground. They're still there in the silver medal position. It's a massive, massive battle for a bronze. Fantastic performance from China. They take the gold. Hungary take the silver medal. And the bronze will go to Belarus. That's Olga Klimova and Nazia Makachanka. It was a real battle in the end there for the third spot. It uh, came through for the Belarusians. Absolutely fantastic performance there from Sun Mengya and Xu Shershao of China to take world championship gold. And you can see they led pretty much from the start. The nose of their boat edging forward straight out of the blocks. Curtis, how hard are those first few strokes as it, when, when the buckets go down? It's Yeah, it's very hard. You, you, earlier in the, the week, um, the crowd had a bit of an effect. You couldn't quite hear the starter, but now they've you know, toned it down. They understand the significance of these events. The crowd absolutely getting behind that Hungarian pair, Kincha, Takac and Virag Bala. They'll be doing the C2 200 metres later as well. But no doubt about the winners, China. Remember, we're looking out for those top eight boats as well. So one of these crews will miss out at this stage for Olympic qualification, but there will be opportunities further down the line it's all extremely complicated, involved lots of maths, but eight boats going through from for Tokyo from this race. A bit like Germany finishing in fourth place there. Good race from them in the uh, outside lane. So as I was saying, really exciting times for women's canoe boat racing as uh, canoeing makes its Olympic debut for the women at uh, Tokyo 2020 and Curtis, some real ex really exciting changes for para canoe in Tokyo 2020 as well. Yeah, that's right. We've had a, another event added to our schedule, which means you know more athletes, more crowd, more, more opportunity for the athletes there. And it's a great opportunity uh, for everyone in para canoe sport to, uh, to come forward and, and have a go as well. Um, these, these ladies here will be feeling that same opportunistic feeling, you know, the excitement of representing their country in a sport that they're do oh. Chinese proved there that they're doing so well. So the first gold medal is collected by the Chinese team. Congratulations. Was it difficult? Oh. <laughs> You're happy? Huh? Are you happy? Yeah. Yes, we're very happy. Well, thank you, my partner. Was it hard all the way? Yes. 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 It was hard and you're happy. We know all the important information. Thank you. Congratulations. Well, there was gold for China in the men's C2 1000 meters yesterday. Liu Hao and Wang Hao taking the world title in that one. And the women's Chinese C2 pairing have repeated that feat with gold now in the women's C2 500 meters. They'll be really looking ahead now to Tokyo 2020 and turning that world championship gold into Olympic gold. What a crowd we have out there in Zeged for this world championships in Hungary. Canoe sprint is a, a huge, huge sport, something the public all get behind. Their, their kayakers and canoeists are like, uh, they're on the back of cereal boxes, they're on the television, everyone knows their faces, they are household names. And Curtis, how have you found the experience of racing here in Zeged in front of a crowd like that and with a, a brilliant, brilliant setup? Yeah, I think the only atmosphere that's come close to this was in Rio. So to have that feeling um, here at the World Championships, um, you know, Zeged's put on a really amazing show with their development and 
and the course and, and the infrastructure that they've impl implemented and it's just an amazing feeling when you're racing down the course and hearing that crowd. Have you had many Aussie uh, supporters out there in the crowd? They've had to come a long way. Yeah, I've actually got a mate I, I served in the army with, so uh, it's nice of him to, to show up here and, and a little old town called Seged, which is you know really cool to have, and then uh, all the, the families of the other athletes as well. Well, for those of you keeping an eye on Olympic qualification, top eight that went through to qualify for Tokyo from that women's C2, China, Hungary, Belarus, Germany, Uzbekistan, Cuba, Ukraine, and Chile. Japan missing out at this stage, but still opportunities down the line, potentially, for them to uh, have another chance to qualify. So everything not lost for Japan. Loads, loads more to look forward to. We've got the women's K1 500 metres coming up. That is going to be a huge, huge battle out on the water. And of course, towards the end of the session today, we have the K4 500 metre racing. That's the one everyone wants to watch. Such an exciting spectator event and loads to look forward to. But first up, the final of the women's K1 500 metres. We've got Lisa Carrington of New Zealand lining up in lane four. She won the K1 200 yesterday, her seventh world title in that event. She'll be looking to do the double. But in lane one, representing Russia, Svetlana Chernogovskaya. In lane two, representing Sweden, Linnea Stencils. Bronze medalist last year in the K1 200. She won the B final in the 200 yesterday by just one hundredth of a second. In lane three, representing France, we've got Manon Ostance. Lisa Carrington from New Zealand in lane four, the 2015 world champion in this event. Olympic bronze medalist at Rio 2016 when she also won her second Olympic gold over 200 metres. Melitza Starovic of Serbia in that green boat in lane five. The 2017 world champion Olga Hudenka of Belarus is in lane six. Lane seven, representing Hungary. Two-time Olympic champion in this event, the defending world champion Danuta Kozak. Emma Jorgensen of Denmark, Olympic silver medalist in Rio. She's in lane eight. And Great Britain's Rebby Simon is in lane nine. Bronze medalist at the Under-23 World Championships a couple of years ago, really making her mark on the senior stage this season. And in this one, top five boats qualify a place for their country at Tokyo. Remember, no athlete will guarantee their own place. They've got to be selected by their country, but... And we are underway in this final of the women's K1 500 metre final. We've got Danuta Kozak of Hungary on the screen there. Emma Jorgensen, though, of Denmark in the black boat got out the blocks really, really quickly, as did that speed demon Lisa Carrington. She has had a blistering start. She won the K1 200 yesterday by more than a boat length. Ridiculous speed and dominance over just 200 metres. She's had a fantastic start, but there's still so much of the race to go. What a brilliant start by Carrington there. Oh, yeah. The first you know, 150 metres, she's got a boat on everyone else and she's proving her class every race she does. So Carrington there looking to get double world championship gold this week. Danuta Kozak in lane seven. She's looking to defend her world title, win a fourth world title in this event. What a performance here by Carrington. We know she has the speed, but does she have... The endurance to keep this going. In lane six, Hodenka of Belarus. She won gold at the European Games back in June in Minsk. Kozak going well as well, but Carrington is just looking so, so relaxed. 
also in the medals there, Milica Starovic of Serbia in that green boat in lane five. Can't see lane nine there, but Rebi Simon from Great Britain looking strong too. Into the Red Boys now. That's 100 metres to go. Lisa Carrington has an absolutely blinding lead in this 500 metre final. Can she hold off a big, big finish from Olga Hudenka? Kozak now starting to close that gap on Hudenka. Has she got enough time to paddle her way into silver or gold? Surely nobody can touch Lisa Carrington now. What a race from the New Zealander. And it is silver for Olga Hudenka of Belarus and bronze for Danuta Kozak from Hungary. And Curtis. What a performance there, repeating the dominance that we saw in the 200 metres yesterday from Lisa Carrington. Yeah, she just got out in front and just held on and, and, and kept everyone at bay. And the, the other competitors were just not able to rein her in and just, just shows her class every single time. An absolutely amazing start from Carrington. Would have been easy to, to wonder and suspect that perhaps she'd gone out too hard, but not a chance. Anyone who knows Carrington knows that she is one intelligent athlete. Brilliant race plan from her. There's Olga Hudenka of Belarus. She won two golds already in this championships in the K2 200 and 500. And she's adding another silver. Kozak had a, quite an interesting start. She started way, like, quite far back from everyone else and then used that, you can see her stroke rate, just a little bit lower, powered and caught up and got that bronze medal position. And Kozak had a bit of disappointment earlier in the week when her K2 ended up weighing under weight in the heat. And so we weren't allowed to progress through to the semis. And we've got a fourth place there for Serbia with fifth going to Emma Jorgensen of Denmark. They are the Olympic qualification places. Lisa Carrington with first. Olga Hudenka with the silver. Danuta Kozak with third. Milica Starovic in fourth and Emma Jorgensen in fifth. But remember, there's lots and lots of a, a complicated process going for this Olympic qualification. So opportunities for the paddlers who didn't make it into that top five to still qualify for Tokyo. There's a bit of a headwind out there today, Curtis. What kind of impact? Let's have, let's have a look at these times. 155.76. We're just talking about the headwind. Not a, not a fast time by any stretch of the imagination, but a lead of one and a half seconds for Lisa Carrington over Hudenka. That is an incredible margin. And she will be wanting to replicate double gold at Tokyo 2020. <laughs> So is a wonder, amazing performance. 200 collected, 500 collected. Where is the, all the energy coming from? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I spent a lot out there today, so I mean, when you hear that crowd, I know it's probably not for me, but um, <laughs> the last 200 meters is uh, pretty spectacular. Yeah, and it seemed that you enjoyed the last 200 meters because you had quite a comfortable advantage. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I enjoyed it. It was a, a lot of hurt um, just trying to keep the girls off. So, are they, I mean, they had an amazing race today as well. Where does it hurt the most? In the arms or where? Everywhere. <laughs> Thank you. It's not going to be very hurtful to stand on the top of the podium, I bet. Congratulations. A brilliant, brilliant result for Carrington. I think uh, some people at home that don't know, perhaps don't know a lot about Canoon will look at Carrington and think uh, her body shape is quite different to a lot of the larger, bulkier, more, more muscular athletes we see out there. But it's not just about the brawn and, and, and muscle as you know, can't just muscle yourself down the course. No, that's right. And a lot of people think that kayaking is just about the arms. It's a full body sport and Lisa's you know, power to weight ratio is probably what she's dominant in. You know, she won't weigh a little bit less, but that power is just there. That does help being a heavier athlete and a headwind. So Lisa sort of is defying, defying the odds there as well. So what, is the di what difference does it make as an athlete paddling into the headwind? How does it, how does it feel different when you're trying to move your boat along? I guess you, you have to almost approach your race differently. You have to think about, you know, reserving some energy a little bit more because of that, you know, the resistance from the wind. But um, yeah, you can sometimes play it into your advantage being a heavier paddler. I think um, for me, I'm quite confident in a, in a, a headwind, but um, for a lighter paddler, they might suffer. But it's the op opposite when it's a tailwind, which we've had all week, and today is a little bit different. 
Well, we're going to see a lot of those uh, K1 paddlers again later on in the four, K4 500 meter final. You know, Hudenka of Belarus will, looking be for, will be looking for yet another medal. Carrington will be looking for yet another gold. But coming up, we have the medal ceremony for the women's C2 500 meter final. Before we move on to the 1,000 metre racing with the men's K2 and men's C1000. And after that, we'll have the women's C2 200. We see a lot of uh, athletes from that 500 coming back out again just an hour later to take on the 200. Curtis, you've, you've contested two events this week. How hard is it within the space of, you know, an hour or even in the same day to, to come out and perform twice? Yeah, and, and just watching that race as previous, you know, those girls were really pushing hard and you know, there was a lot of hurt on their faces. So coming back out again, it's going to be tough work, especially you know, another 500 metres. It's really tough. Well, here we have the medal ceremony for the women's C2 500 metres and the medals will be presented by Jose Perurena, the president of the International Canoe Federation and IOC member and the team leader from China. Bronze medalists at the 2019 ICF Canoe Sprint World Championships. Borja Klimova and Nadzeja Makarchanka representing Belarus, Fayin Orosovsad. Bronze medal in the women's C2 500 for Olga Klimova and Nadzeja Makarchanka of Belarus. Silver medalists at the European Games in Minsk just a couple of months ago, picking up bronze now on the world stage. A huge roar from the home crowd for Kincha Takac and Virag Bala of Hungary. Now the reigning European champions are now silver medalists at the World Championship in the C2 500. And it's another C2 gold for China. Sun Mengya and Xu Shi Xiao repeating the success of the Chinese men's pairing in the 1,000 metres yesterday. And a quality, quality race from this pair, leading from start to finish. Tisztelt Hölgyeim és Uraim, kérem, álljanak fel a kínai nemzeti himnosz tiszteletére. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem of the People's Republic of China.
There you have it, your medalists in the women's C2 500 metres. Bronze for Klimova and Makachanka of Belarus. Silver for Takac and Bala of Hungary. And gold for Sun and Shu of China. Curtis, what does it feel like to be up there on that podium hearing your national anthem? Does it ever does it ever get boring? No, it never does. It's uh, it's a very special moment, you know, you're very proud of, of the achievements and you know that for those those two standing on top of the podium and, and myself I've been there as well and it, you know it's a reflection and a feeling that you get from the people that support you to get there. So um, it's a really, really special moment and it's uh, one that's you know has been supported quite well by the crowd, where, whoever's on top of the podium. And two golds for you at the uh, Paracanoe World Championships. You must have been pleased with the performance as well as the result, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I didn't have m probably my best ra races I've ever had. Um, but I, I, I'm up against some, some tough competition, and you know I've always had a better back end of my race than uh, the front end so uh, that, that sort of pushed me all the way and you know I just had to remember what I was up to and um, remember what my strengths were and that was the finish. And it's actually been a fantastic world championships for the whole of the Australian Paracanoe team hasn't it? That's correct yeah we, we've, um, we came here aiming for four quota spots for our nation and, and that's what we've achieved thankfully and um, you know, two gold, one silver, one bronze, one fourth and one seventh. So it's a, uh, a good, good uh, sort of performance by our country. Well, next up we have the final of the men's K2 1000 metres. And we do have an Australian pairing in there, Jordan Wood and Riley Fitzsimmons. Fourth place last year, the under 23 world champions in 2015. Back there in lane one, representing Hungary, Zoltan Kamara, 41 years old, five-time Olympian, alongside Peter Istvan Gar. Huge, huge response from the crowd from this pair. And Kamara won gold in this event back in 2006. Jordan Wood and Riley Fitzsimmons of Australia, we've already mentioned these two looking to improve on that fourth place from last year. In lane three from Lithuania, Ricardas Nekriosius and Andre Olenik. The Italian pairing of Luca Beccaro and Samuele Borgo in lane four. Beccaro was a silver medalist at the under 23 European Championships last year with Tommaso Frischi. Lane five, Josef Dostal and Radek Sluf of the Czech Republic. Dostal, we saw win silver in the K1000 yesterday. Germany's Max Hoff and Jakob Schopf. They will be the ones to keep your eyes on. Gold at the European Games. Hoff, the reigning champion with Marcus Gross from last year. France's Cyril Carré and Etienne Hubert in lane seven. In lane eight, Spain's Francisco Cubelo Bilios and, in, and Inigo Peña. And in lane nine, representing Russia, Roman Anoshkin and Vladislav Litovka. And so, so much quality to keep your eyes on throughout this field, but exciting to see some veteran paddlers. I don't think Max Hoff would be particularly pleased with me calling him a veteran, but an extremely accomplished and experienced paddler. Max Hoff, 36 years old, pairing up with Jakob Schopf, age 20, in the German K2. They won gold at the first World Cup in Poznan, second at the second World Cup in Duisburg. But they're all, they're both world champions in the K1 in their own right. Schopf as a junior, Max Hoff three times as a senior in the K1000. And they go in lane six.
Well, we're underway in the men's K2 1000 metre final. It's a big start from Dostal and Sloop of the Czech Republic in that centre lane. Spear heading it out. Hoff, though, of Germany getting that stroke rate up in the front of the German K4. Shot behind him. Great, great start from the Germans. They already have a lead. Italy, though, Beccaro and Borga going really, really well. They were the junior world champions together in the K4 back in 2015. Look at Lithuania, though, out in lane three. They're going really strongly. Spain, though, the world silver medalists from last year. That's Kubelos and Peña really, really paddling strongly out of the start. 46.92 the time going through the first 250 metres. It is Germany still with a slight lead, but at the moment, this is going to be a really, really tight race, Curtis. Yeah, you can see a few different um, race plans happening here with the, the Czechs sort of holding back, but still within reach, definitely. And then everyone else sort of battling it around that second and third spot. Still is with Germany, Hoff and Schopf. Czech Republic looking really good there as well. Dostal, the Olympic silver medalist in the K1000 at Rio 2016. K1 world champion in 2014. They're just back in there at the moment, but we know they've got a big, big finish. They're coming to the 500 metre mark. We're halfway now in this men's K2000 metre final. It's Germany still with the lead. Australia, Lithuania and Italy are up there. Jordan Wood and Riley Fitzsimmons, they're starting to make their move. They're moving now into the silver medal position. Really intelligent race plan here from Australia. Yeah, I also saw uh, the Germans there have a little kick at 500, so watch out if they can hold uh, everyone else off, but everyone else looks like they're staying in touch. Well, we're coming up to the last 250 metres now. It's all going to be about who's got more in the tank, who's got a little, who's got the best endurance, who's got some power to put down over the last 250 metres. Germany have led out from the start, 2.30 to split time with 250 metres left to go. Spain are currently in second place with the Italians there in third and Australia in fourth. Remember Australia picked up fourth last year. Spanish still looking really, really strong, but what a big finish from the Germans. They've kept everyone just in sniffing distance behind them, but now it's Hoff and Schopp who are putting down the power. They're into the last 100 metres. They're keeping the Spanish pairing at bay. They have a boat length lead. Italy looking really, really strong as well as the Czech Republic start to put down the power in the last closing stages. And it will be a gold for Germany. Spain take the silver. And it looked like France, Kari and Hubert, who came through for the bronze medal. What a finish by them. And that was a close, close finish. So many boats in contention there for the medals. But it's Hoff and Schopf of Germany who take gold. Gritting his teeth there out of the start of the men's K1000. This was where the Australians made their move. I don't think they quite held on for a medal. But importantly, six boats will qualify from this race for a place for their country at Tokyo 2020. So not just about that top three, not just about the medals. Everyone wants to be in Tokyo next year. Look at that field, so, so close for the bronze. Silver to Spain, bronze to France, Czech Republic in fourth, 
Australia holding on for fifth and Italy coming through in sixth place unofficially. We'll have to wait for the judges to confirm that. And Max Hoff retains his world title in the men's K2 1000 metres. And uh, Curtis, will, will Jordan Wood, Riley Fitzsimmons be, be pleased with that performance, would you say? It's, it was a really tough race, but disappointed to be out of the medals. Yeah, yeah, I think um, they might be a little bit disappointed with that last little like 100 metres. They just you know, pushed really, really hard and, and we're, we're right in contention. And then that French crew came through and that was where the battle was for that third spot. And the Aussies were there and, you know, so it's such close racing. It just shows the depth of field here. 320.53, we just saw there the winning time for Max Hoff and Jakob Schopf of Germany in the men's K2 1000 meters. Really, really intelligent performance from them. You can see the experience that Hoff has just to keep the rest of the field just behind them and then switch it on at the 500 meter mark and nobody had any reply. And in just a few moments' time, we'll be moving on to the men's C1 1,000 metres. Now, in, in uh, Olympic racing and canoe sprint, very, very few people, if at all, compete in the K1 or the, K the kayak events and the canoe events. But for para canoe, you, you, you yourself actually switch between the K1 and the VAR. And the VAR is a little bit similar to a, to a C1, isn't it? Except for you're sitting, sitting you're seated. How difficult is that to not only compete in two separate disciplines, but to train them both So, Max well. Jakob, you were um, celebrated by hundreds of Germans on the stand, so partly home crowd. What does it feel like? Yeah, yeah it's so great. I was, it was such an incredible good race, and Jakob did such a big job, a good job here behind me, and yeah, I'm totally flashed off you. It was so loud, and thanks for all of you to come out here. I think it was, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's difficult to defend the title, right? Uh, yes, last year I don't sit in the K2, but I think we did a great job. Max holds his title, and it's my first big, 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 big title. Uh, yeah, I'm 20 years old, I'm so happy. And what is the big, 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 big title that you're going to win? What is your expectation? Yeah, maybe my big aim is next year Tokyo. But first, this year, with this amazing... <laughs> So all the hard work paid off and I want to say thank you to Markus because he, after he was ill, he's a really good friend of me and he had a good behavior to me and it was just, yeah, everything is the same and I'm happy with Jakob now, he's like my son and 16 years younger but it makes a lot of fun and he's much more relaxed than me before the races and yeah, we are super happy now and uh, thanks to everyone here, thanks to at home, to my friends and yeah girlfriend and everybody who supports us it's great okay. the son and the father and gold medalist congratulations well there you have max hoff paying tribute to his former k2 part partner marcus gross who he's won the world championship title with before now pairing up with 20 year old jakob shop who hoff says is like a son to him and uh, what, what a brilliant way to, to blood new exciting fresh talent and putting them in with a, with a multiple world champion yeah it's uh the best way to do it you know you've got years of experience you know multiple world champion and uh jacob jumping in the back of that boat and making yeah obviously enjoying himself too now that is not easy to do <laughs> that is not easy to do i'd like to see what happened after that shot um Curtis, a moment ago, uh, sorry, I, I was um, just about to interrupt Hoff and Shop, but um, a moment ago I was asking you about how difficult it is to compete in the uh, in the K1 and the VAR yeah. on the in the same week and, and, and train the, the both disciplines as well. Yeah, it's pretty hard, but, um, you know, with good coaching and, and programming, that's what happens. But uh, we'll, we'll see some C1 coming up now. Next up, we have the final of the men's C1 1,000 metres. And the one to look out for in this one is the youngster in lane three, the Cuban, just 18 years old, Jose Ramon Pellier Cordova of, G of Cuba. Newly crowned junior world champion in the 1,000 and the 200 metres and shocked the field to win gold at the first World Cup in Poznan. 
But out there in lane one, that's Tomasz Kaczor of Poland. Gold at the European Games a few weeks ago. Two minutes to start. Two minutes Belarus's to Maxim start Piatrov is in All lane two. Lane three, Jose Ramon Pellier Cordova of Cuba just mentioned him. He beat the Olympic and world champion, the European champion, under 23 world champion to take gold at that World Cup in Poznan. Is Zacchaeus Quiros dos Santos of Brazil, the 2018 world champion, over 500 in lane four. Lane five, Sebastian Brendel, 31 years old now, reigning world and Olympic champion. Zheng Pengfei of China in lane six. In lane seven, representing the Czech Republic, Martin Fuxa, reigning European champion in this event and over 500 meters as well. Adrian Barr of France in lane eight. Gold medalist at the World Cup in Duisburg. And finally, in lane nine, Carlo Tacchini of Italy. 2017 and 2018 under 23 European champion. So we've got the experience of Martin Fuxer and Sebastian Brendel in lane seven and five. And that potential dark horse, Jose Ramon Pellier Cordova, just 18 years old in lane three. Can he cause another upset? Remember, this one again, not just about the medals. Top five boats in this race qualify a place for their country at the Olympic Games. start there. A bit of nerves flying, I think. Yeah. Couldn't quite see who the, who the culprit was, though. Fuchs are just getting himself back in the boat. Well, here we have it, the final of the men's C1 1,000 metres. It's lanes five, six and seven getting out the blocks really, really well. Sebastian Brendel of Germany, gold in the C1, 500 metres yesterday, looking to do the double. But it's China who is just taking an early lead over the first 100 metres. That's Zheng Peng Fei. He won three gold medals in the C2 on the World Cup circuit this year, but this time focusing on the C1 at this World Championships and doing a great job of it so far. But just half a boat length lead ahead of Kaczor of Poland. He's out in lane one. Brendel going well, just keeping himself in contention there. We know Brendel can have a really, really big finish as we saw in the 500 meters yesterday. Fuxer is there as well. And a really, really tight field going through that first 250. And Curtis, this could go anyway at the moment. That's right, it's a long race and you know, there's a lot of strategy in a thousand metres, so we'll be looking to see who's at that 500 metre mark. And it is Pe Zheng Pengfei just starting to slip back now amongst the field. There is nobody here who is out of contention for the medals in this men's C1 1000 metres. Really, really psychological battle in this one with everybody so, so close. Saw the Chinese pair take gold in the C2000 yesterday. But here comes Brendel already. Brendel makes his move into the lead. He goes, the reigning world and Olympic champion, looking to defend his title here in Zeged in Hungary. Martin Fuchs are there as well, as is Kaczor of Poland. They're through the 500 metre mark, 158.91 the time. Still 500 metres left to go. And again, still such, such close racing here. And Curtis, what, is it, what does the body feel like when you're, when you're going, when you've got such a, uh, a long race still ahead of you? But 
also what mentally what does it feel like when you've got another another athlete right there out of the corner of your eye threatening your lead yeah you'd really want to feel like you've got a little bit left in the tank i think you know it's a such a long race these thousand meters and um it's all about their their race plan and i guess you can't quite react at the 500 meter mark you've got to react later on in the race and having that energy in the tank near the end is what it's all about and someone who has a lot of energy in his tank by the looks of things is Ezequiel Quieros dos Santos of Brazil. He is really making his move now. He's putting down the power and coming into the lead with just 250 metres left to go. He's starting to put clean, clear water between himself and Sebastian Brendel. Quieros dos Santos, the 2018 world champion in C1500 and C2500. He is starting to make his mark now on the C1000 here in Zeged. He is starting to dominate this race. Keep your eye on Martin Fuchs, though, as well. Adrian Barr of France, he's having a storming finish too. Has he got enough to chase down Quieros dos Santos of Brazil? They've only got 100 metres left to go at the moment. Cachor of Poland is there in medal contention. So is Fuxa of the Czech Republic. Brendel too. We know Barr has got a brilliant finish, but he is not the only one. But still, it's with Ezequias Quieros dos Santos of Brazil. What a finish by him. Brilliant last 250. He slaps the water. He is the world champion. It's Tomasz Kaczor of Poland who takes the silver. And Adrian Barr of France looking like the bronze medalist in this men's C1 1,000 metres. That was a tight finish. Those last couple of medals could have gone either way. But there's the new world champion. Oh. Good start from Fuxa there in lane seven. And even though Zheng Peng Fei of China got out well, didn't hold on long enough to get into the medals. It's just as my uh, coach said, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And the Brazilian really came through and shows uh, his class there. This is one of the exciting things about canoe and kayak racing is that, that the lead can change so many times. Yeah, yeah. A thousand metres it gives so many opportunity and you can make a couple of mistakes uh, in the thousand metre, not so much in the, the shorter distances, but um, uh, the Brazilian didn't make any today. And he knew he had won before he'd even crossed the finish line, slapping the water in celebration. A brilliant, brilliant result from Ezequias Quieros dos Santos of Brazil. Bronze medalist in the C2 1000 yesterday. Bronze in this event last year. Now the world champion. Sebastian Brendel had a bit of a lunge there. It was so close. It just mistimed it uh, for fourth place by the looks of things. Yeah, according to the unofficial times, just five hundredths of a second so, uh, separating third and fourth there between Adrian Barr and Sebastian Brendel. And uh, didn't quite see what we may have expected to see from the Cuban athlete, Jose Ramon Pellier Cordova. He really did shock that field in Poznan by taking gold, but he is down in ninth place today. 3.59.23, the winning time for the Brazilian. More than a second and a half behind Tomas Cacho, who is always there or thereabouts out in lane nine, in lane one. But... Uh, a brilliant finish from him. And as I said, five hundredths of a second separating Brendel in fourth from Adrian Barr in third. And it was Martin Fuchser of the Czech Republic who took fifth. And those top five qualify places for Tokyo. And I can really feel, certainly as a, as a spectator, a real and a little bit of an extra buzz around the competition at the moment, Curtis, because um, well, hopefully in a moment we'll get some words from our from our gold medalists. But just because it's uh, Olympic qualification as well, do you feel that as an athlete that there's a slightly extra edge to it? Yeah, there's more of a feel, more of an excitement, and like 
for me in my competition, it's exactly one year to go today until the Paralympic Games. So you know, the, the Olympics is a little bit closer, and uh, I think they'll be feeling that, uh, uh, that that event, you know, those those pr the little bit more excitement and pressure that's coming with, with the uh, qualifying events. Does it change anything in the, in the preparation for a Paralympic or Olympic qualification, or is it just the same kind of um, prep as you, if you'd always done for a, a World Championships previously? I, I think it's a, a little bit more about, you know, getting that qualifying spot rather than, um, you know, the medals and you're having, you know, different the two sets of priorities. You know, the, obviously the qualifying's first and then your, your medals are second. Real Samba on the water, your world champion. What do you feel? Thank you. Thanks so much. Não sei falar inglês, mas queria agradecer a todos minha equipe que a gente veio aqui preparado para disputar contra os melhores do mundo. Agradecer a Hungria por esse campeonato maravilhoso e é muito bom poder ganhar aonde o grande ídolo meu já foi campeão aqui, o Atila Vaida. É muito bom ser campeão aqui. Muito obrigado. Thank you. Obrigado. Well, there you have your world champion in the men's C1000, Izaquias Quieros dos Santos. He won three medals on the home waters at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. None of them were gold, though, and so we'll have his eyes on the top of the podium, I'm sure, heading into Tokyo. A brilliant, brilliant performance from him. Well, still to come, we have the final of the women's C2 200 meters, the men's C1 200 and the men's K2 200 meters before we round things off with the men's C4 500 meters, the women's K4 500 meters and the men's K4 500 meters. Well, next up, we have the medal ceremony for the women's K1 500 meters. And the medals for this one will be presented by Simon Toulson, the Secretary General of the International Canoe Federation and the team leader from New Zealand. The medals are presented by Mr. Simon Dawson, Secretary General of the International Canoe Federation, accompanied by Mrs. Marie Burnett, team leader of New Zealand. 2019-ben az ICF gyorsasági kajakkenú világbajnokság bronzérmese, bronze medalist at the 2019 ICF Canoe Sprint World Championships, Kozák Danuta representing Hungary, Magyarország. Danuta Kozak of Hungary, the bronze medalist in the women's K1 500 meters, relinquishing her world title. Two time Olympic champion in this event, London 2012 and Rio 2016, and bronze here today in front of a home crowd in Zeged. Ezüstérmes, silver medalist, Volha Kudzenka representing Belarus, Fehir Oroszország. A third medal of this championships for Olga Hudenka of Belarus. Two golds already in the K2 and silver in the K1 500. In 2019, gold medalist and world champion. Lisa Carrington representing New Zealand. And New Zealand's Lisa Carrington does the World Championship double, and she does it in style. No doubt about either of her results. Clear water between her and the rest of the field today in this 500 meters and yesterday in the K1 200. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem of New Zealand.
there you have your world championship medalists in the women's K1 500 meters. Danuta Kozak of Hungary with the bronze, Olga Hudenka of Belarus with the silver, and Lisa Carrington of New Zealand. What a star of this champion she has been once again with the gold. The big question now is it, can she back it up and guide the Kiwi K4 500 to the gold medal spot? Yeah, that uh, 500 meter K4 is going to be a huge, huge battle later on. New Zealand finishing silver last year. They'll be gunning for gold here in 2019. Well, next up, we have the final of the women's C2 200 metres. And really interesting to see how those athletes who took part in the C2 500 earlier on can double up just uh, less than an hour later. And uh, see whether they can get double medals in the space of an hour. In lane one, representing Colombia, Ana Lady Daza Ochoa and Manuela Gomez Sanchez. In lane two from Belarus, Olga Klimova and Nadzea Makachanka. We saw them win bronze over 500 meters earlier on. Big, big cheer there for Takac and Bala of Hungary. They were the silver medalists in the C2 500 meters. They are the reigning European champions as well. Uzbekistan, Dilnoza Rachmatova and Nilufa Zukirova in lane four for Uzbekistan. China's Lin Wenjun and Zhang Lu Qi in lane five. They're certainly ones to look out for after their performances at the World Cups this year. From Russia, Daria Harchenko and Ksenia Kurach. They're in lane six. In lane seven, Moldova's Maria Olorasu and Daniela Koshu. In lane eight, Ukraine's Ludmila Luzan and Anastasia Chetverikova. The reigning under-23 European champions in C2 500. And finally, Indonesia in lane nine. Deumin and Nermany. Here we go, the final of the women's C2 200 meters. Brilliant start by this, by this Chinese pairing, Lin and Zhang. They already have a convincing lead in this C2 200. They won gold at both World Cups this year and both World Cups last year, including here in Zegged at the 2018 event. And they have the lead here over Hungary, Takac and Bala gunning for yet another medal after their silver in the 500 metres earlier on. Also, Uzbekistan going really, really well in lane four. They'll be getting some bumpy water from China and Hungary, though. Hungary putting the pressure on the Chinese. Can China hold on to take the gold? China are the world champions. It's Hungary who takes silver. And a really, really close finish between Uzbekistan and Belarus for the bronze, but I think just about went to... Uzbekistan in lane four. Brilliant race, though, from the Chinese pair. They must have got into this event, the favourites, after their performances in the World Cups. And they are the world champions, Lin Wenjun and Zhang Lu Qi. there with a big big finish they really look to be closing down the Chinese but they held on C2 
so close between Uzbekistan and Belarus. I still can't quite call it. And it looks like the lunge from Uzbekistan that uh, did it for them in the end and just got them over the line for the bronze. That still knows that Rachmatova and Nilufar Zokirova reigning under 23 world champions now, senior bronze medalists. Now, this one is actually a, a non-Olympic event, but really, really exciting to see, even in, in the non-Olympic events, how women's canoe boat racing is just getting so much more hotly contested. The quality is there. The depth is really, really there as well now. 44.69, the winning time for Lin and Zhang of China. Takach and Bala less than a half a second behind. And yeah, as I say, a real, real excitement and a real buzz around women's canoe racing. And I can imagine it's really similar for, for VAR paddlers in para canoe that they're going to get to compete at a Paralympic Games. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool feeling when you, when you know a sport that you've been you know, competing in for a while is, is then added to the, the Paralympic program or, or Olympic program for that fact as well too. So um, you know, the, these ladies will, will be pretty happy with themselves for, for performing now and maybe in, maybe in Paris we might see it added to the So when you're in Luki, who are you celebrating with? Who are they? Hello, my friend and family. my yes. family. <laughs> it, it must be a good feeling to become world champions in front of your closest family members, right? Yeah, yeah yes. Oh. <laughs> happy. So very, very happy. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Lin Wen Jun and Zhang Lu Qi of China, gold medalists in the women's C2 200 meters. Following on from a gold medal winning performance by their compatriots in the women's C2 500, China's Sun Meng Ya and Xu Shi Xiao winning gold in that one. China really, really looking extremely dominant in uh, canoe boat racing, especially in the doubles. And we're going to have more canoe racing coming up in just a moment's time with the men's C1-200. Curtis, for you, do you get some time off now after this World Championships? Um, how much how much time will you get to, to chill out a little bit and relax before it's back into full on training ahead of ahead of Tokyo? Um, probably probably a little bit, a month or so of low tempo, but um, yeah, we do have the test event, so that'll be off to Tokyo in two weeks. So be a, uh, a pretty cool event to see as well. Next up, we have the final of the men's C1 200 meters. Now, this one no longer an Olympic event. That was removed from the program ahead of Tokyo 2020 to make room for some different races. But still, this is an absolutely massive field. In there, we've got Zestortas of Lithuania, three-time under-23 world champion. Here we have the um, <laughs> European Games silver medalist Nikolai Kratun of Italy in lane one. Helder Silva of Portugal lining up in lane two european bronze medalist back in 2014 zaza nadiradza of georgia in lane three one of the fans favorites reigning european champion in this one yonatan haidu of hungary in lane four popular with the home crowd junior world champion in 2013 and 2014 henriquez zustotas of lithuania bronze medalist last year and as I said, three-time under-23 world champion. Artshom Korsir of Belarus. In lane six, he's the reigning world champion. Alfonso Benavides of Spain in lane seven. Bronze medalist at the European Games back in June. So much silverware, as you can tell, lining up in this men's C1 200 meters final. Tomasz Barniak of Poland, he goes in lane eight. And in lane nine, from Iran. Adel Mojalami Mogadam, world bronze medalist back in 2017. 
looking to put his mark down on this men's C1 200 meters final. Some 200 meter racing. Such a good spectator event, Curtis. Yeah, 200 meters. It's over very fast, and they're so close to the stands. They just told the crowd to be quiet so they can hear the start. start in this men's C1 200 meter final. Sistotas of Lithuania has got out really, really quickly. He has the lead. Nadaradza of Georgia is in contention as well. Brilliant start as well from Korsir of Belarus in lane six. It's Sistotas with the lead, but Korsir is there as well for Belarus. Still, Nadiradza, he's in contention for the medals. What an absolutely close field. Less than 50 metres left to go. Zestortas has the power. Can he hold on to keep this first place? And it will be Enrique Zestortas of Lithuania who takes the gold ahead of Artshom Korsir of Belarus with the silver. And Zaza Nadiradza of Georgia takes bronze in the men's C1 200 metres. Brilliant, brilliant race there from Zestortas, leading start to finish. And over 200 metres, Curtis, how tough is it to, to come back if you uh, don't have a good start? Uh, it is really rough. It, it, you know, you, you really have to remember everything you've been taught, you know, not trying to overrate yourself, trying to race someone else's race. You just got to remember, you know, your training and everything, and uh, it, hopefully that pays off in the end. Such an incredibly high stroke rate for these canoe athletes as they come out of the blocks. These boys are generally the biggest athletes amongst the whole canoe field, so it's uh, always a delight to watch them battle it out. You can see the pain in Zestortas' face, gritting his teeth as he powered towards the line. And canoe racing, it can all be about that final lunge for the finish line, just giving yourself an extra boost in the last meter or so. And Korsir of Belarus and Nadaradza of Georgia did just that and looked like Korsir just came out on top for the silver. Big, big cheers out there from the Lithuanian crowd. Amazing to see so many different flags, so many different colors out there in the stands and so much noise in every single race. Thirty-nine point three six, the gold medal time for Henrikus Zestortas of Lithuania, upgrading that bronze he won last year to take the world championship title. And just a tenth of a second separating Archstrom Korsir of Belarus with the silver and Zaza Nadiradza of Georgia with the bronze. And remember, no Olympic uh, qualification up for grabs here. Non-Olympic event all about the medals and all about the glory. So, Henrikas, lots of Lithuanian uh, fans and flags all around. They're all celebrating you. How's that feel? Yeah, people are very so... Thank you, Lithuania. It's my, my team. And I'm really happy to win first time world champion. Two years ago, you was uh, you were a European champion. Now you're world champion. Big step, right? Yeah. Before five years in Seged, I win first time world under 23. So now, after five years, I come back and win senior world championship. So I'm very happy. Enriquez, enjoy the moment. Well done. Thank you. Enriquez is the Stortas of Lithuania the world champion in the men's C1 200, saying there that his first under-23 world title was here in Zeged in 2014. Now, five years later, he is back. And 
with a senior world championship gold medal about to be placed around his neck. In a few moments time, we'll have the final of the men's K2 200 meters. And Curtis, just a, a quick word from you. Um, for those for those who, who don't know, don't necessarily follow Paracanoe at home, tell us a little about, you, about your story and how you came into the sport. Yeah, um, obviously I am a Paralympic athlete now and that mainly because uh, I was deployed to Afghanistan in 2012 and I, I stepped on an improvised explosive device or a landmine um, and it detonated beneath me and took both my legs. So. Interrupted Curtis's story there. We now have the final of the men's K2 200 meters in just a moment or so's time. And Curtis, what was it that made you get into canoe paddling? Oh, so I'll ask you that in a minute. We're still <laughs> just watching the lineup here for the men's K2 200 meters. In lane one, representing the Czech Republic, Philipp Schwab and Andre. Bischitzki in lane two from Germany, Kostya Stroinski and Timo Hazeloy. Lane three, Aurelien Le Gaulle and Frank Lemoel from France. That's the Polish crew in lane four, Piotr Mazur and Bartosz Grabowski. In lane five, Mark Balaska and Leventi Apagi of Hungary. Balaska, the reigning world champion with Balash Birkas. In lane six, representing Russia, Yuri Kostrigai and Alexander Diachenko, Olympic champions in 2012. In lane eight, that's Spain's Juan Oriez and Daniel Abad. Ukraine's Alexander Senkovich and Dmitro Kostyshen in lane eight. And Uruguay's Sebastian Delgado and Matias Otero in lane nine. Well, here we have Mark Balaska of Hungary looking to retain the world title that he won with Balash Birkas. They also won the title back in 2017. So can Velasca make it three in a row, this time paddling with Leventi Apagyi? And the crowd has been asked to be silent as the paddlers approach the start and get themselves into their buckets. Alongside the Hungarians, the Russians, Postrigai and Diachenko, really experienced pair. They've been paddling together a long time. Olympic champions back in 2012, world and European champions in 2013. The crowd will be behind Balaska and Apagi. Here we are, we're underway in the final of the men's K2 200 metres. It's Postrigai and Diachenko who get out of the box really, really quickly in that black boat in lane six. Their arms are going around so, so quickly. That stroke rate so high. Just getting a fantastic start, lifting the boat out of the water. Hungary, Balaska and Apagi alongside them. Poland's Mazur and Grabowski are pushing their way forward, really taking it to 
Russia as they cross the line. Russia take the goal with Poland with the silver. What a fantastically close race in this men's K2 200 metres. Looked like the Hungarians had a bit of a hard start there. They went just a touch early and didn't quite get that timing right. And um, what an absolutely frantic, frantic race. This is a former Olympic event. It was removed from the program ahead of Tokyo 2020, but still so tightly contested and still one that the crowd really, really loves to get behind because of that straight weight, because of that power, because of just how fast and how closely contested it is. Brilliant start by the Russian pairing. There's a big fight back from a big part of the field towards the last closing stages. They did grip their teeth and they did cross the line to take the gold with silver going to Poland and the... Germans or the Hungarians? Really, oh, really so difficult tight. to tell, even from that photo finish, whether it was Hungary or Germany, who will be awarded that bronze medal. We saw yesterday in the women's K1 200, we can have a, a joint medal position. But let's see whether the uh, judges can tell who got that one. Bronze has been awarded to Hungary, but by just two hundredths of a second ahead of the Germans who finish in fourth. 33.05, the winning time for Yuri Postrigai and Alexander Diachenko of Russia. And what an incredible story for them. They won the Olympic champion, Olympic uh, Games back in 2012, and seven years later, they are the world champions once again. And the Polish fans really out there in force as well, getting behind Piotr Mazur and Bartosz Grabowski, who finish with the silver. an amazing race by the Russians but I can't I can't help but not focus on that Hungarian pair that didn't have the best start but came through and you know just just edged out the German team yeah to be able to do that over 200 meters is absolutely incredible after not having a great start we saw Liam Heath do it in the K1 200 yesterday as well not much time to correct a mistake So Yuri and Alexander, when it comes to 200 meters, it's always very tight in the end. But you made it, you're world champions. How does that feel? Yes, yeah, it feels great. It's a great race, good speed. And uh, congrats, Hungarian and Polish team. Guys, it's good, very good race. Do you enjoy the moment? What does it feel like? I'm very happy that we sat together in this team and we managed to repeat it. 2013 год. It's very cool, very good feelings. It's great. It's very cool in the hot Hungarian summer. Congratulations. Well, there you have Yuri Postrigai and Alexander Diachenko of Russia, gold medalists in the men's K2 200 meters. So, so tough to get those words in after paddling for your life in a world championship final. And I'll go back to Curtis now, because just a moment ago, I was trying to sort of talk to you about your, your own uh, journey into canoe and, and kayak racing. And, and for you, what was it that, that made you kind of come into this sport and, and take it on and take it seriously? Yeah, I did a, a little bit of whitewater kayaking when I was uh, younger at high school and really loved the sport. And I, I knew how much you know, time and effort and work goes into becoming a, an elite athlete. And I wanted to do something that I really enjoyed. And and sprint canoeing was coming to the Rio Paralympics and that's what I chose and stuck to it and it's, it's been a, a choice I definitely do not regret. Do you miss any of the other sports that you used to be into before you were a, you know, a dedicated uh, uh, kayaker and canoeist? Yeah, I used to run a, run a lot um, and that's obviously something that requires uh, uh, some 
forethought with some prosthetics and things like that. It's also a little bit uncomfortable. Um, so uh, having the opportunity to, to have a sport which I feel comfortable in, like kayaking, is, is really great. But running something I do miss. Well, in just a moment's time, we will have the medal ceremony for the women's C2 200 metres. And then after that, we will have some K4 and C4 racing to round off the final session today. Men's C4 500, women's K4 500, and men's K4 500 as well. And they really will be the showpiece event. Absolutely fast and furious competition really requires so much technical ability, the synchronicity, to the timing and stroke rate as well. So lots to look forward to still this afternoon with those races and also more opportunities to qualify boats for Tokyo 2020 in those two K4 events. And uh, more to look forward to from Australia, from the women's crew in the K4, Curtis. Yeah, they had an amazing uh, semi-final yesterday as they're, they'd be very happy with themselves to make it into the, the A final and, and looking for that uh, qualifying spot. It's, it's a, a very tough field and um, they'll be hoping to, to secure that, that uh, ticket to Tokyo. Also to look out for in that women's K4 500 will be the New Zealand crew, the silver medalist last year, just one one hundredth of a second behind the Hungarians who took gold. They will be really, really gunning to be on top of that podium this time around. And also Lisa Carrington will be looking for that third gold medal after winning the women's K1 200 and 500 meters. Curtis, I can imagine for you, as someone who used to be in the army, compared to being in a war zone, I guess, being at a world championships, you know, your, your previous experience must prepare you for being in, in situations of, of pressure. Yeah, I, a little bit. I, I guess, you know, searching for landmines and kayaking is a little bit different, but, uh, you know, the, the pressure of, you know, performance, I think, is, is probably what is similar there. And, you know, if you make a mistake in a war zone, it can be fatal and, uh, and life-changing, whereas was here, it can be life-changing, but not fatal, thankfully. Yeah, it gives you a bit of perspective on, on, on the sport, I guess. Right. Well, now we do have the medal presentation ceremony for the women's C2 200 metres. The medals are presented by Mr. Paul Schmidt, member of the International Olympic Committee, former president of the Hungarian Olympic Committee, accompanied by Mr. Xindi, team leader of the People's Republic of China. 2019-ben az ECF gyorsasági kajakkenú világbajnokság bronzérmesei. Bronze medalist at the 2019 ICF Canoe Sprint World Championships. Vilno Zara Akmatova and Nilufar Zokirova representing the Republic of Uzbekistan. There you have your bronze medalists in the women's C2 200 meters. Uzbekistan's Dilnoza Rakhmatova and Nilufar Zokirova reigning under 23 world champions, adding a senior bronze to their medal cabinet.
ezüstérmes, silver medalist, Takács Kincső és Balra Virág representing Hungary, Magyarország. And collecting their second silver medal of the afternoon, Kincső, Takács and Virág Bala of Hungary. Silver in the C2500 earlier and now silver in the women's C2200 meters. champion, Lina Van Yun and Xang Lugi representing the People's Republic of China, Kina. And continuing their dominance on the world stage in the C2200 this year, Lin Wenjun and Zhang Lu Qi of China, they take the gold, adding that to the two gold medals they won on the World Cup circuit earlier this year. Very, very difficult to beat this pair. Tisztelt Hölgyeim és Uraim, kérem, álljanak fel a kínai nemzeti hibnusz tiszteletére. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem of the People's Republic of China. Well, there you have your world championship medalists in the women's C2200 meters. But next up, we have the final of the men's C4500 meters. In lane one, representing the Czech Republic, Christoph Hayek, Daniel Korinek, Ivan Prochazek, and Antonin Krabal. In lane four, in lane two, representing Belarus, Andrei Bakhdanovic, Evgeny Tengel, Maxim Krisko, and Vitali Pasteki. Hungary are lining up in lane three. Alongside them in lane four, the reigning European champions, Russia's Stil Petrov, Melantev, and Pavlov. Poland lining up there in lane five. World Championship silver medalist in 2017 in the C4000. Ukraine in lane six. Silver medalist last year. In lane seven, Romania. Karp, Diva, Stoyan and Strat. Germany lining up in lane eight. And finally, the crew from Spain in lane nine. And some really exciting crews to keep your eye on in this one. As we've already mentioned, Russia are the reigning European champions, the reigning world champions. They go in lane four. They'll be the ones with the targets on their backs in this C4 500 meter final. Ukraine, they won silver last year. They'll be looking to go one better here in Zeged. Well, we're 
underway in the final of the men's C4 500 meters. It's Poland who get out of the blocks really, really quickly. Brilliant power being put down through the water from that crew. See the water flying around out, so much splash. As they try and get out the blocks quickly, get their boats up and running. Belarus going extremely strongly. So are Germany in lane eight. That's Vandre, Scheibner, Hecker and Adam. Andre and Scheibner, the part of the crew that won World Championship gold in the C4000 in 2017. Russia powering through. It's Belarus, Russia and Germany who are powering into the lead. And amazing, Curtis, to see the uh, timing and synchronicity of, the, of these fours. I've got a friend over who's never seen uh, kayaking before and seeing C4 is amazing. You know, they're all kneeling up, the synchronicity and the balance and then applying that power. Well, we're through the 200 metre mark. Russia and Germany are neck and neck. They're nose to nose. Belarus there as well. So are Ukraine in that blue boat just being edged out of medal contention at the moment. Germany really putting the pressure now on Russia coming down this last 100 metres. The goal is by no means decided with just 50 metres to go. Germany closing that gap. Have they got time to catch the Russians. It is Russia with the lead, Russia take gold, Germany with the silver medal, and it's Belarus who take bronze in the men's seat for 500 metres. And Curtis, a fantastic battle out in front there between the Russians and the Germans. Yeah, it was a, uh, a good battle with the Russians, really just had the right race plan. They pushed forward and held on to that lead. Uh, a very commanding sort of position. I'm really not sure with, with four or five lanes between them whether they actually know which has taken the gold. Germany certainly celebrating there. The power from that German crew, absolutely immense out of the blocks. Yeah, each one of them gritting their teeth. really wouldn't want to look across to see whether you're in front or not being that far away it would really you know mess up all the rhythm of the boat so you know waiting on those results now real real immense battle between the Germans and the Russians I must say some of the camera work that these guys have been putting out has been exceptional got a spider camera here it's been like the shots are beautiful and there you have it Russia retain their world title they are the 2019 world champions in the C4 500 Germany with the silver medal and Belarus taking bronze Big, big celebrations all round from the Russians. What a picture. And Germany celebrating their silver medal after finishing fourth last year. They're back on the podium in the C4 500. One thirty-four point six nine, the gold medal time for Russia in the C4. Germany just over a second behind. Belarus in third, Ukraine in fourth, Hungary fifth, and Spain in sixth. With Romania in seventh, Czech Republic in eighth, and the Polish crew down in ninth.
Сопа... Дома, Дарина, Марияша, Настюха, всем привет, люблю! Поздравляю! So Pavel, Mikhail, Viktor and Ivan, this is a great Russian team and this is the team spirit that we saw. Are you happy? Very happy with this. My friends, my sportsmen and this very fast racing. Uh, very, very old guys. Thank you. <laughs> old, old team. You three, you are old and this is the young guy, right? Or Freaking three years old. Oh, yeah. we are very happy because we can won this distance second time. And yeah, 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 yeah! Thanks a lot. Thank you. I don't know what they're talking about. 33 is an old, honestly. <laughs> but yeah, really, really lovely there to see just how much the team spirit can come through when it comes to these crew boat events. Yeah, you could definitely tell that they were happy with that and they really enjoyed themselves and um, come together as a team and, and that's what the, the crew boats are all about. Well, plenty more crew boat rating to come and um, Curtis, for you, preparing, obviously you've got to get selected, but preparing for a second Paralympic Games. What did you learn from Rio? What could you do? What would you do differently, if anything at all? Um, I, I had an amazing Paralympic Games, so I, I, I wouldn't want to change too much, but obviously there's going to be another event for me, so it's going to be managing that, that balance of, of training. Um, and then I think Tokyo is going to be a lot warmer than Rio was, so um, we're going to have to manage that somehow. And you know, before we came over here, we did a bit of heat testing and some, in a heat tent, um, so probably a little bit more of that. And, and getting used to the, the climate is going to be a difficult thing for all the sports in Tokyo this time uh, next year. Well, next up, we do have the finals of the women's K4 and men's K4 500 metres now. There is qualification up for grabs in both of these events. We have the women's K4 500 metre final next, but in both of these events, 10 boats will qualify from these world championships. But amongst those 10 boats, and must include nations from four different continents. Now, that makes qualification pretty complicated. I'm certainly not the expert, but because we've got representatives from uh, Oceania and from Europe in uh, in this particular final, that means eight boats will qualify from this race. We've got Australia out in lane one, and we've got France in lane two, Guillaume, Jamelo, Troel, and Ostance. In lane three, Poland's Naya Pawawska, Kowalczyk, and Wisniewska. Last year's bronze medalists. Bronze at the European Games as well, back in June. Here we have last year's gold medalists, Hungary, or at least uh, two paddlers from last year's gold medal winning crew, Dora Bodonyi and Erika Medvechki. Alongside them, Olympic bronze medalists, Belarus, that's Litvinchuk, Hudenka, Papok and Makneva. Looking to go one better from last year's silver medal, New Zealand's Carrington, Fisher, Ryan and Emery. One minute to start. In lane one seven, minute. the team from Ukraine, All Christian, Kitschova, Skorik, Pov and Todorova. Spain's Panchenko, Stepanova, sorry, Russia's Panchenko, Stepanova, Kovnir and Dolgova in lane eight. And representing Germany in lane nine, Dietze, Jon, Herring, Pradler and Aft. Dietze and Jon, silver medalists at Rio 2016 and London 2012, world champions in 2015. Now paddling with Sabrina Herring, Pradler and Caroline Aft in that crew as well. This one is going to be fast and it's going to be absolutely furious. These semi finals were so, so hotly contested. Some amazing crews missing out on a place in this A final. But your eyes, I can expect Curtis on that uh, Aussie crew out in lane one. Yeah, it's going to be nice to see them out there. And uh, they've, they've had a, a really good preparation. I trained with them. Um, 
in Australia and then in Italy as well. So um, I think they'll they'll go pretty well here. particular about these starts. It's just with that headwind that's pushing them back just a bit. Well, the final of the women's K4 500 metres is underway. Big start there from the Belarusians in that white boat out in lane five. Remember, Litvinchuk and Hudanka in that crew have already got two gold medals under their belts in the K2 200 and K2 500. They are powering their way down the course. New Zealand, though, they have got a sniff of that gold medal as well. They're alongside them in lane six. Hungary going really, really strongly in lane four as well. This is really spearheaded in the middle with Belarus taking an early lead. Brilliant, brilliant paddling from them. And this is going to be a massive, massive battle over the last 250, Curtis. That's right. It's, good. it's so close, you can't even really tell yet. Well, Hungary really coming through now. They're through the halfway mark, coming in over the 200-metre mark now. Hungary just have about a foot over Belarus. Belarus there in the white boat with the red vest. But Hungary seem to just be edging away as New Zealand slip back. Poland coming into contention now for those medals. Really, really strong last 250 from the Hungarians. Can anyone else make an attack on this gold medal? It's Hungary and it's Belarus battling it out at the front of the field. They've got less than 50 metres to go. Poland and New Zealand going head-to-head -head for the medals as well. And it will be Hungary who take the gold. Belarus with the silver. Poland pick up bronze. New Zealand just edged out into fourth place. What a race, what superb timing from the Hungarian crew. A brilliantly, brilliantly timed race from the home side. The crowd are going absolutely wild. They are the reigning European champions and they are now the world champions. Brilliant performance by Hungary there. See, that's a fantastic shot to show how crucial that timing is in a K4. And the crowd always trying to lift the athletes on. Brilliant composure from the Hungarians under so much pressure from the crews around them. Silver for Belarus. Great finish by the Poles to take third. With New Zealand down in fourth. And um, are you surprised that New Zealand weren't quite up there in the medals? In the I, I am a little bit. Um, just, I, I can't help but think, like, was Lisa's uh, performance in the K1 500 have an effect on that boat? Um, and she is in pretty much the, the in charge of that crew. So it's, it's a hard, hard slog. And it's the field, you can just see it. It's very competitive. And despite not making it into the medals, though, New Zealand will have qualified a K4 for the country for Tokyo. But a big, big one for Hungary to win a K4 gold in front of a home crowd. That's exactly wanted, what the crowd wanted to see. Well, there you have it, 132.91, the gold medal time for Hungary in this women's K4 500. That home crowd advantage really pushed them through, I think, and they're very happy with themselves.
So, first of all, in English, Dor Katomi, Erika Dora, congratulations. Four Olympic places and a great victory. How does that feel in front of the home crowd here? <laughs> this is a, it's more than pure happiness. We are, thank you and you are amazing. <laughs> Dor Kadora, what are your feelings? It was a really good race, I think. Dorka ran away all together with Tommy, so that's about it. Congratulations for the Hungarians. Back to back world champions. Yeah, this is one that is so, so hard to repeat, so hard to defend your title, but Dora Bodoni and Erika Medvechki, both in that crew that won gold last year. And they are back and taking gold once again, but really good for the Belarusians as well, taking silver. Interestingly, you, you mentioned now, you know, perhaps Lisa Carrington's performances and, and exertions in the K1 might have affected the crew, but you look at Marina Litvinchuk and Olga, Olga Hudenka in the Belarusian crew. They've won two golds already in the K2-200 and the K2-500. Hudenka earlier on went and got a silver in the K1. So absolutely amazing for them to be able to come out and perform time and time again. That's four medals in four races for Hudenka. Yeah, it's a, an amazing performance there and she should be very, very pleased with herself. Well, the final... A final of the afternoon. We have the men's K4 500 meters. And again, 10 boats will qualify for Tokyo from this world championships. But as I said, 10, those 10 must include nations from four different continents. Now, in this one, because all these A finalists in the men's K4 500 meters are from Europe. That means we need to. Well, that means three boats from uh, the B final will qualify as well to make up those four continents, meaning only seven crews from this men's K4 will qualify a place for their nation at Tokyo. And is uh, Paralympic qualification this complicated, Curtis? Um, it, on paper, when you when you see it, not really. But when you start looking at trying to do two events, very, very complicated. Um, and your disability classes, then you've got your, your uh, qualifications as well. Well, in lane one, you have France. Lane two, Hungary's Birkash, Nadas, Topka and Kuli. Representing Russia, European Games gold medalists Sergei Gusev, Ershov, and Kuzhakmatov. They're in lane three. The European champions, Spain, Kravioto, Arevalo, Hemade, and Vals are in lane four. All boats come to the start line. And alongside the reigning European champions, we have the reigning world champions, Germany in lane five. Liebscher, Rauer, Renschmidt and Lemke. Slovakia, they go in lane six. European Games bronze medalist back in June. In lane seven, we have Portugal, Silva, Ribeiro, Varela and Batista. Belarus lining up in lane eight. And in lane nine, Czech Republic. In that Czech crew in the third seat, Daniel Harvel. He was a K4 bronze medalist at Rio 2016. to qualify another K4 now as we look ahead to Tokyo. Oh, 
Well, a big, big start from the Germans in lane five in this men's K4 500 metres. They want this one. They are the reigning world champions. Ren Schmidt and Liebscher, the reigning European champions over 1,000 metres as well. Great start from them. The French crew in lane one, they are really, really going well as well. And so are Spain in lane four. France, they were silver medalists at the first World Cup in Poznan. Spain, the European champions, are really taking it to Germany now. It looks like between Spain and Germany, we are going to have a huge battle. It's a very tight race. Everyone's within uh, half a boat length of each other. So, so tough to just keep that focus on yourselves inside your own boat as you're going head to head. Spain have taken the lead over Germany. Germany are reacting though. And Spain just slipped back. Huge battle on for the bronze medals as well. As Germany and Spain go head to head, coming into the last 100 metres of this men's K4 500. They won gold at both the World Cups earlier this year, Germany. Can they do it again at these World Championships? They've got a good lead now over Spain. Germany take the gold. It's silver for Spain. And potentially Slovakia with the bronze, but that will go down to the judges and the photo finish. Brilliant performance from Germany. They held off a fight back from the Spanish crew to win World Championship gold once again and defend their title. It was a pretty amazing race by all the crews there. I've just noticed that the Portuguese front paddler has snapped his paddle in the lunge to the finish line. Must have meant a lot. Tight racing at the end there for Thons. This was the moment that the German crew reacted to that break from the Spanish and Spain did not have an answer to it. It's a, a wonderfully executed race plan there by Germany. Timed it to perfection. It is gold for Germany ahead of Spain and I think just about Slovakia ahead of Russia for that bronze medal. Really, really tight racing there. Of course, the uh, German K4 on Friday in the K4000, they also won gold. That was Reuschenbach, Frank, Torsten and Schultz. So double gold for Germany in the K4 events this week. Just shows their depth. They've got a lot of paddlers to pull on if someone gets injured. As they lead towards Tokyo, their, their national qualifying is going to be Hot. One nineteen point two six, the winning time for Germany, ahead of Spain with the silver and Germany with the bronze. Such an exciting race! Everybody loves the the K4, and it's become even faster and more frantic now. It's been reduced to five hundred meters from the thousand at the Olympic Games. So Max Ronaldson and Max, it's very well done. I start with the youngest Max, all right? So you're like 15 years younger than the oldest member of the team. That's good team uh, work. Uh, I didn't really understand what you said, but <laughs> yeah, I am younger than Ronnie and I don't think it matters. He's still like us when it comes to training. And we had an awesome race here and a perfect, awesome crowd. 
It is hard work and good team. It is good team spirit and hard work. It just is. It's, I think it's a good dynamic between all the young. You call it. So we have fun with our sport and it just works. So, and just one thing. Cousin, I'm hungry. Once again, Germany had the balance right of experience and youth coming through, making making their depth, like I said before, be shown. It just means they can do it year after year, bring that young talent in, and by the time the, the older paddlers move out and decide to retire, those young paddlers have already got a lot of experience yeah. and knowledge under their belts. But brilliant result from Germany, taking the gold in the men's K4 500 metres. And for you, Curtis, what was the outstanding performance of the afternoon? Which race really caught your eye? Ooh. I, I'm not sure. I think uh, so many. It's hard to choose that one. That's a tough question. I think um, for me personally, I think it was really great to see the uh, Australian women's K4 uh, to qualify. Um, so I'm very happy for them. Uh, thank you very much to Paralympic gold medalist and 10-time world champion Curtis McGrath from Australia for his expert analysis. That's it from me here at the 2019 Canoe Sprint World Championships in Hungary. But of course, for the athletes, this is just the beginning as they turn their focus towards being at their ultimate best for the Tokyo 2020 Olympic and Paralympic Games. The medals are the medals are presented by Mr. João Tomasini Schwertner, Executive Committee Member of the International Canoe Federation, accompanied by Mr. Laura Souza Jr., coach of the Brazilian team. 2019-ben az ICF gyorsasági kajakkenu világbajnokság bronzérmese. Bronze medalist at the 2019 ICF Canoe Sprint World Championships. Adrian Bart representing France, Francia Orsag. Ezüstérmes, silver medalist, Tomasz Kacor representing Poland, the Lengyelország.
2019-ben aranyérmes és világbajnok, in 2019 gold medalist and world champion, Isaac Yasquieros dos Santos representing Brazil, Brasilia! Tisztelt Hölgyeim és Uraim, kérem, álljanak fel a brazil nemzeti himnusz tiszteletére. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem of Brazil. És uraim, a 2019. évi világbajnokság érmesei, gratulálunk! Ladies and gentlemen, the medalist of the World Championships in 2019, congratulations! Tisztelt Hölgyeim és Uraim ünnepélyes eredmény hirdetés következik a férfi Kenu négyesek 500 méteres versenyszámban. Ladies and gentlemen, medal awarding ceremony for men a seat for 500 meters. Az érmeket Tomás Konieckó úr, a Nemzetközi Kajakkenu Szövetség alelnöke adja át, kíséri Evengé Arkipov úr, az orosz válogatott csapatvezetője. The medals are presented by Mr. Tomas Konietzko, Vice President of the International Canoe Federation, accompanied by Mr. Yevgeny Arkipov, team leader of Russia. 
2019-ben az ICF gyorsasági kajakkenó világbajnokság bronzérmesei. Bronze medalist at the 2019 ICF Canoe Sprint World Championships. Andrei Bogdanovich, Yevgeny Tengely, Maxim Krishko and Vitaly Asetsky representing Belarus, Fehér Oroszország. Ezüstérmesek, Silver Medalists, Jan Vandrei, Konrad Robin Scheiber, Tim Hacker and Moritz Adam representing Germany, Németország! Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem of Russia. És uraim, a 2019. évi világbajnokság érmesei, gratulálunk! Ladies and gentlemen, the medalists of the World Championships in 2019, congratulations!
Tisztelt Hölgyeim és Uraim ünnepélyes eredmény hirdetés következik a férfi kajakpárosok 200 méteres versenyszámban. Ladies and gentlemen, medal awarding ceremony for men K2 200 meters. Az érmet egyszer Szilia Parias asszony, a Nemzetközi Kajakkenő Szövetség alelnöke adja át, kíséri Jevgeni Arkipov úr az orosz csapat csapatvezetője. are presented by Mrs. Cecilia Farias, Vice President of the International Canoe Federation, accompanied by Mr. Yevgeny Arkipov, team leader of Russia. Bronze medalists at the 2019 ICF Canoe Sprint World Championships. Apagyi Leventen, Balas Kamar representing Hungary, Magyarország. Ben aranyérmes és világbajnok in 2019 gold medalists and world champions Yuri Bostigan and Alexander Diachenko representing Russia Oroszország. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem of Russia. Ladies and gentlemen, the medalists of the World Championships in 2019, congratulations.
Tisztelt Hölgyeim és Uraim ünnepélyes eredményhirdetés következik a férfi kenusok 200 méteres versenyszámban. Ladies and gentlemen, medal awarding ceremony for men, C1 200 meters. Az érmeket John Edwards úr, a Nemzetközi Kajakkenú Szövetség elnökségi tagja adja át. Kíséri Alexandra az Alec Krinksis úr, a Litván válogatott csapatvezetője. Presented by Mr. John Edwards, board member of the International Canoe Federation, accompanied by Mr. Alexandras Alek Klinskis, team leader of Lithuania. 2019-ben az ICF Gyorsasági Kajakkenu Világbajnokság bronzérmese, bronze medalist of the 2019 ICF Canoe Sprint World Championships, Zaza Nadiradze representing Georgia! Ezüstérmes Silver Medalist, Artem Kozi representing Belarus, Fehér Oroszország. Then Oranjermes is Világbajnok in 2019 gold medalist and world champion Henrikas Zusautas representing Lithuania. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem of Lithuania. Ladies and gentlemen, the medalists of the World Championships in 2019, congratulations.
Hát, hölgyeim és uraim, ünnepélyes eredményhirdetés következik a férfi kajakpárosok ezer méteres versenyszámban. Ladies and gentlemen, man on awarding ceremony for man K2 1000 meters. The medals are presented by Mr. Tomasz Konijacko, Vice President of the International Canoe Federation, accompanied by Dr. Jan Skalting, leader of Germany. Az érmeket Tomás Konijácko úr, a Nemzetközi Kajakkenő Szövetség alelnöke adja át, kíséri Jens Kál úr, a német válogatott csapatvezetője. 2019-ben az ICF Gyorsasági Kajakkenő Világbajnokság bronzérmesei. Bronze medalist at the 2019 ICF Canoe Sprint World Championships. Cyril Kár and Etienne Uber representing France, Franciaország! Ezüstérmesek, silver medalists. Francisco Cubeo and Inigo Pena representing Spain, Spanyolország! Ben aranyérmesek és világbajnokok in 2019 gold medalists and world champions Max Hoff and Jakob Schoff representing Germany Németország. Gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem of Germany. Tisztelt Hölgyeim és Uraim, kérem álljanak fel a Német Nemzeti Himnusz tiszteletére. Ladies and gentlemen, the medalists of the World Championships in 2019, congratulations!
Tisztelt Hölgyeim és Uraim! Ünnepélyes eredményhirdetés következik a női kajak négyesek 500 méteres versenyszámban. Ladies and gentlemen, a medal awarding ceremony for women K for 500 meters. Az érmeket Zúr Kazakas Krisztina kétszeres olimpiai bajnok a Nemzetközi Kajakenu Szövetség Sportolói Bizottságának tagja adja át Kísér is, mint Gábor úr, a Magyar Kajakenu Szövetség és a Szervező Bizottság elnöke. The medals are presented by Mrs. Kristina Zurfazekas, two times Olympic champion and athlete committee member of the International Canoe Federation, accompanied by Mr. Gabor Schmidt, president of the Hungarian Canoe Federation and the chairman of the organizing committee. 2019-ben az ICF Gyorsasági Kajakkenú Világbajnokság bronzérmesei. Bronze medalists at the 2019 ICF Canoe Sprint World Championships. Karolina Naja, Anna Pulavska, Katarzyna Kolodziecki, Helena Wisniewska, Poland, Lengyelország! Silver medalists, as we stir mashak, Marina Litvinchuk, Vorha Kudzenka, Nadzeja Pabok, and Margarita Kaneva representing Belarus, Fehir Orosország. In 2019, gold medalists and the world champions, Bodoni Dora, Medvedski Erika, Csipes Tamara, Gazsó Alida Dora representing Hungary, Magyarország! Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem of Hungary.
2019. évi világbajnokság érmesei. Gratulálunk! Ladies and gentlemen, the medalists of the World Championships in 2019. Congratulations! Ünnepélyes eredményhirdetés következik a férfi kajak négyesek 500 méteres versenyszámban. Ladies and gentlemen, medal awarding ceremony for men K4, 500 meters. Az érmetet hozzá kell lenni a nemzetközi kajakon szövetség elnöke, a nemzetközi olimpiai bizottság tagja adja át, Kisúri Tomás Kuniacko úr a német kajakon szövetség elnöke. The medals are presented by Mr. Jose Perurena, President of the International Canoe Federation, member of the International Olympic Committee, accompanied by Mr. Thomas Konietzko, President of the German Canoe Federation. 2019-ben az ICF Gyorsasági Kajakonó Világbajnokság bronzérmesei, bronze medalists at the 2019 ICF Canoe Sprint World Championships. Erik Vulcsák, Ádám Botek, Csaba Zalka and Samuel Balaz representing Slovakia! Érmesek. Silver medalist Saul Cravioto, Carlos Arevalo, Rodrigo Germain and Marcus Volt representing Spain, Spanyolország.
2019-ben aranyérmesek és világbajnokok in 2019 gold medalists and world champions Tom Lipscher, Ronald Rauer, Max Ranschmidt and Max Lemke representing Germany in Németország. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem of Germany. So everybody, we still have time a little later for a quiz game. You need to 
type Seged 2019 BOT to the messenger application and still if you didn't do so please download CU to be able to put your selfies onto the big screen. But now this is one great moment for rope pulling on the water. Szeretném bemutatni a résztvevőket, jó? És szeretném azt is, hogy mindenki figyelve. Ne dőljetek be nekem. Hát túl a kerül vagy, tessék.